One of the questions I have for you is, as both a political and economic partnership that involves 28 and soon to be 27 countries, the European Union has grown really to become almost operating as one single country. And going forward, since the UK's exit, exiting, how do you think this will fit into the global landscape as it seeks to redefine itself? So going forward, how do you think? Well, it, it, it will have more um, political ramification than economic. I don't expect the economic impact of it after a year or two to be quite significant. In the short term, people are reacting or overreacting to the vote. So we can see that in the stock market, uh, almost crashing last uh, Friday and then then Monday, yesterday, but today, the last time I checked, the, at least the U.S. stock market was somewhat up. So uh, there will be uh, uh, a revival in, in, in all of the stock markets and in any other kind of economic uh, uh, reaction to the vote. Now, the future, of course, depends on how the politicians and policymakers in Great Britain would embrace the vote of the majority and uh, formulate uh, a kind of economic plan for their, uh, for their country and go forward. And that, that remains to be seen. We don't know how they are going to handle that because there will be a different cast of politicians now in charge. Because David Cameron, the prime minister, announced his resignation. So, but, but since um, Great Britain has a tradition, probably the strongest in the world, of a democratic system, a parliamentary system, uh, I, I don't expect um, that this will lead to economic crisis. There will be some, some corrections, there, perhaps there will be a mild economic recession, but these are all remain to be seen. It's really um, difficult and not very really wise to uh, make a prediction or at least a, an exact prediction of what is going to happen. But my expectation is that the Great Britain is going to be doing just fine uh, after a period of maybe about a year. And uh, the European Union uh, it seems to have more struggled with this at the moment because they lost their second largest economy. And uh, London is, is the largest financial sector in the world, providing um, so much financial services for the entire Europe. And there is no reason to believe that that is going to stop. That should continue. Um, but again, it, then, uh, that part of it largely depends on um, the reaction of the European Union leaders to this vote. Do you have any thoughts then on trade and immigration laws? Uh, yes, yes. It, uh, the, the, the issue, if, if we are to believe the, the news, uh, immigration, the issue of immigration, which has uh, become a, a, a problem for the entire Europe in the, in the past few years or so, especially in the last maybe six months, when was it the, since the migration of uh, a large number of people? from the Middle East into Europe, uh, the issue of immigration seems to be, uh, if, again, if you believe the news, um, was, a, was a major driver of the Brexit. That uh, a lot of people came to believe that they are getting all these uh, migrants because they cannot control their borders, they cannot control the flow of people into their country. So if they exit, they can do that. Um, but there are other arguments here. Uh, people 
uh, have pointed out accurately that, uh, that much of the migrants or immigrants into England are coming from outside the EU. They are not coming from other countries within the European Union. And many of them actually who go into England, they move on and go to other countries. Because once you are in the European Union, you can move freely within the EU. Um, so these are the arguments that, you know, we encounter uh, regarding the immigration. I believe immigration was a major factor in, in, in Brexit. Trade also, you ask about the trade. Yes, trade, I believe, was also an important factor here. Because outside London, which provides the financial services, um, other areas in, in England that had traditionally been manufacturing, they have seen their manufacturing declining. And uh, the same um, phenomenon that we've seen in the United States, uh, that both political parties uh, focus on the declining manufacturing jobs, for example. Well, the same thing is happening in, in, uh, in Europe and in, in, in England. So the, um, the Brexit seems to be also uh, triggered by, by the declining manufacturing jobs. Personally, I believe that this is a wrong uh, perception of what the trade does. Much of the manufacturing jobs that are being uh, wiped out, in fact, and, and destroyed forever are done because of this, this destruction of manufacturing job is due to uh, technology. It's the technology that is replacing human beings doing the work. And technology has the characteristic of being almost the public good. They, technology can, be, can go anywhere. So it, it goes to places where uh, labor is cheaper. And, uh, you know, the Great Britain or United States or any other country might be able to control its borders and the flow of immigration, but they cannot do anything about technology. Technology can, can go anywhere can be transplanted anywhere in the world. Uh, so the declining manufacturing jobs is going to continue. And whether we are talking about Brexit or here we are talking about in the US, whether Donald Trump becomes president or Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders, it doesn't matter. The declining manufacturing job will continue. This is a force that cannot be resisted. So that's, that's my view on, on the issue of the trade. But a lot of people uh, don't think that way and, and, and vote for a certain action, such as Brexit, or cert vote for a certain politician because they believe that the action or the politician is going to save the manufacturing job. It's not going to happen. So this action, then, by Britain, do you think there will be a domino effect? Do you think other countries will follow suit? Um, a few might. There is a possibility there have been other countries who have, a, have been asking the question, um, why are we in the EU? Why, what has the EU uh, done for us, and a lot of people believe that the answer is nothing. And uh, so uh, it remains to be seen. Um, and Norway and Switzerland are not a part of the EU. They are, they are not members, and they are doing just fine. They are doing just as well as the members of the EU. And in some respect, maybe they are doing even better. Not because they are not the member of the EU, but, but, the, but the fact remains that you don't have to be a member of the EU to have a prosperous economy and, and have more control 
over uh, fiscal policy, monetary policy, and um, uh, taxation and regulations, immigration, and so forth. So there, there, there could be a, a movement among some countries. It's, it's hard to tell when or which ones, but I wouldn't be surprised if some other countries follow suit and, uh, and they also vote to exit. My own view is that, however, that the union is, is beneficial. I mean, it may have flaws. I think the, the bureaucrats in the European Union impose uh, too much regulation, too much restrictions, um, and they didn't realize the unintended consequences of what they were doing. Nonetheless, being a member of a union, and especially a union such as the European Union, very large, very powerful, very advanced, uh, it, it's definitely beneficial to the members. Uh, perhaps Brexit is, um, was a wake-up call for the bureaucrats in, 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 in the European Union to slow down on their using their power the power in terms of um, taxation and regulations. And as, as one of our most important trading partners, maybe you would argue that, then with Britain's exit, what will that mean specifically for the United States economy? Yeah, be before I answer your question, let me, let me say that when I mentioned taxation, I didn't mean that the the European Union as, as a political entity imposes taxes on the member countries. Mm -hmm. The taxes are imposed within the country. Mm -hmm. But when there are other requirements, other rules and regulations, whether it are immigration or in other ways that the member countries have to provide for their citizens, uh, then that requires finances and that leads to higher taxations. I mean, for example, Great Britain raise consumption taxes uh, from 17.5% to 20%. And uh, what that was imposed within the United, within Britain by the British government, it wasn't imposed by the EU. Uh, nonetheless, being a member of the EU uh, could lead to this type of action. That, that's what I meant. Now, um, the question you just asked, the implication for the U.S., I think this is an opportunity for the U.S. Yes, I think this provides an opportunity for the United States to reach out to England, which is one of the largest economies in the world and has historically and traditionally had great ties with the U.S. Uh, uh, to actually form a union with, with Great Britain, establish a free trade uh, between the two countries, um, maybe even invite Great Britain to become a member of or a part of the North American free trade area with Canada and Mexico. Uh, I think the flow of economic activities could even become larger between the two countries as a result. It is a fact that Britain is, is the destination where the United States um, invest more in, it's called the foreign direct investment. When we establish a business in other countries, it's called foreign direct investment. Is, is the largest foreign direct investment by the U.S is made in Great Britain. And similarly, we are the most popular destination for Great Britain for their foreign direct investment. So we already have uh, tremendous economic ties between the US and Britain. And that become even stronger and larger. So there is an opportunity there, and I hope we take advantage of it.